There we go. Thanks for joining everybody. Uh, once again, happy new year, happy uh, Tuesday. Thanks for joining all the offices. And uh, we have uh, uh, quite a good uh, um, amount of participants in the offices and virtually as well. Uh, special guest today. Uh, in a few moments, I'm going to moments. I'm going to introduce uh, um, Oscar Way, uh, one of the uh, top economists for the CAR. Uh, I'm going to start, first of all, uh, in the you know spirit of uh, Oh, this week, Janet, do you want to lead us? Okay. Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. <clears throat> oh, beautiful. Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful one, huh? Yes, and appropriately from Martin Luther King. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about, um, you know, uh, you know, you, you can be famous in your own, uh, uh, your own farm or your own industry or your own circle. It's just how far do you are willing to go to be at service, right? That's what's going to define you. Um, and that, that, that is greatness pretty much. Right, Janet? Yes. Thank you for being great. <laughs> Would you rather be famous or great? That's right. a good one. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> It is a special week. Shout out to our um, uh, ALCs uh, throughout the offices. Uh, we finally got the, you know, th those, those flyers set. Uh, we're going to head this uh, end of the month to a, a retreat as well. This is the uh, Calabasas team. Uh, congrats, everybody. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, some are, uh, you know, keep, you know, keep servicing and on the board and some uh, um, new to the, uh, to the board this year. Um, this is our South Bay team shout out to you guys thank you um being a great lc some you know uh, most of them same thing like just continuing some uh joined uh this year and uh this is our la harbor team um all of them continued from last year so go to see good, good to see all on the board thank you for for your service and uh long beach coastal team thank you for uh <laughs> happy to be here so they're all you know uh, making some noise over here uh, but thank you for your service. Um, most of you, uh, you know, continue from previous year and uh, some are new as well. So looking forward to uh, uh, impactful retreat then of the month. Um, that's our LC. And now to the uh, main speaker, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, talk some numbers and uh, see what happened last year and where we're heading. Uh, pleasure to introduce, uh, as always, our uh, um, you know, friend and, and, and representative in, in the state level, Oscar Way. Uh, Oscar is a deputy chief economist of the California Association of Realtors and a statewide trade organization uh, uh, professionals with more than 200,000 members. I think it's even more than that at this point. He uh, campaigns the research um, and economic department and oversees the operations of data analytics and server research within the division. As, the, as an economist at CAR, Oscar provides regular updates on the economy, state and regional housing markets, consumer behavior and public policy issues. Um, Oscar, how many years have you been with, uh, with the industry so far? I've been with CAR for 19 years now. Next year is gonna be my 20. 20th year, well, well we have to <laughs> celebrate for sure. Uh, special 20th. Uh, well, thank you for your service as well and for being great at that. Um, Always a good, you know, pleasure to have you. So lead on, and I think you have the uh, screen rights. You can you can share and, and tell us the all the good stuff. Absolutely. Um, let me pull up my uh, PowerPoint first of all. And uh, yes, I've been with CR for twenty years now, so I have seen some of the uh, interesting stuff that happened in um, in two thousand and. Um, five, six, seven, and eight. And of course, now it's the pandemic. Uh, it's hard to, you know, for an economist that obviously look at economic cycles, uh, typically you don't really see, you know, uh, two huge cycles within your career. But here we have one in 2007 or eight, nine, we got a great recession. And now of course this one actually, the pandemic situation actually, uh, pull the uh, the economy down even further, but it actually increased back up significantly, really in a very very short period of time. 
Um, and and many you mentioned it correctly. We I believe we have um, close to about two hundred twenty thousand members now. Um, I think the final numbers will still need to be tallied, but. Uh, Last I heard, it's right around 216, 217. We're still waiting for some numbers to come in. So I don't know, how, I don't have the final numbers yet, but you're absolutely right. It's it's more than what I expected when we projected the number at uh, the mid of last year. I was expecting about 210-ish or so, but it exceeded that number. All because the housing market has been doing well, but that also means, you know, when you have more members, that means there's a lot of competition, which is probably, which is the kind of the theme that I'm going to emphasize competition as well as you know how good the market has been. So let's get started. Let me start sh um, showing you some uh, slides. Now, as usual, I am going to talk about, I'm gonna break it out, uh, break down the uh, presentation into three segments. We're gonna talk about the market first, give you a little bit of uh, background information, give you a little bit of information about what happened in the last few months or so. And then I'm going to look at you know the big picture. I'm going to talk about you know how the economy has been doing you know, what some of those uh, factors could affect the housing market as well as, you know, all, everyone. Uh, and then we are going to look at, you know, the outlook. We're going to take a look at how the market will look like in 2022, whether sales are going to go up, prices are going to go up or not. And we're going to address some of these structural issues. Well, we may not have those uh, solutions for those structural, structural issues, but it's definitely something that we need to keep in mind so that we can um, keep those and you know let our um, clients know what's going on and things like that. So let's get started. Let's take a look at, let's review what happened with the state market. I am going to have, in this section, I'm going to have the state numbers. I'm going to have some regional numbers and I'm also going to have some city level data as well. Um, today, actually, we uh, are releasing our December's data. So this is fresh, hot, uh, hot off the press. And I'm going to look at some December number as well as the year as a whole for the 2021 compared to 2020. So let's get started. Let's take a look at a, a quick snapshot of the housing market at the state as a whole. Um, if you look at these numbers, you can see a couple numbers jump, you know, on, on screen here to show you, you know, how the market has been doing. On one hand, if you look at the year over year percent change at the end of last year, it shows a 15.7% decline. Yes, we're seeing some slowdown in terms of sales, partly because of the uh, Omicron variant, partly because of interest rates, but also partly because of supply constraint that we have been seeing. Uh, but keep in mind also, second half of 2020, we actually had a very robust you know, second half in fact, you know, at the end of 2020, it was actually the highest level that we have seen for maybe going back to um, 2008 or nine or even before that. So when you compare it to you know the highest or the highest level of sales uh, in the, the last 15, 16 years, obviously you know it is going to show a little bit of a decline, especially since interest rates are a little bit higher compared to you know, 2020. So a drop of 15.7% is not a surprise. What you should look at is also this number, 430, 429,860. That's actually a pretty decent number. If you compare that to pre-pandemic level, which, mean, which is 2017, 18, 19, that's actually very on par. In fact, you know, that's actually close to you know, the highest level in um, some of the uh, pre-pandemic years. And if you look at the whole year, the year as a whole for 2021, this is the number, the year to date number. Comparing 2021 to 2020, we're actually 8% higher than 2020. Given that we are actually still in a pandemic, you know, condition, uh, we're still in a pandemic, COVID, you know, actually just increased significantly in terms of cases. Um, and we're still doing very, very well. And that's because a lot of people still wanna buy and also because of demographics, which I'll show you uh, towards the end of the uh, outlook. Um, this number, the year 20, 2021 number actually was uh, right around 444,000 uh, when, when we look at the seasonally adjusted number and 444,000 is actually the highest in, in the last nine years or actually in the, la in the highest since 2009. So that's very, very impressive. At the same time, we also have significant increase in prices. You probably have heard, you know, we have um, double digit gain in price 
uh, for the last, uh, for most of the months, uh, actually for all the months in 2021. And for the year as a whole, I'll show you those numbers. It's actually increased from 2020 by about um, close to 20%. The median price right now uh, for the year as a whole for 2021, it's 786,000, very significant. Now I know compared to some of the areas that you guys look at or uh, market to, it's actually not a, a, a huge number, but for the state as a whole, that's actually a, a fresh new high, record high. Now I show you those uh, actual uh, 2021 numbers already. So this is just a chart that shows you what I mentioned earlier. Now this number at the year end at 430, if you compare it to the historical uh, pre-pandemic level, it's actually pretty decent. You know, we're, we're pretty on par. It's actually, you know, about the, uh, some of the pre-pandemic high. Now we can't compare, to, uh, compare the number to the 2005, 2006. Part of the reason is, you know, people were over leveraged, people over leveraged in 05 and 06. And we know what happened, you know, after, after the, uh, the over leveraging, we got a little bit of a decline in 2007, 2008. But the, the level that we're at is actually pretty decent compared to the last few years. But not every single price segment's actually improved. I mentioned this before, the higher price segments continue to do better compared to the lower price segments. Lower price segments continue to, to, to decline. When I say lower price segments, anything above, uh, below 750 continue to decline by double digit at the end of last year. But even for the higher price segments, it starts showing some softness uh, when compared, again, when compared to December 2020. Keep in mind 2020 again, uh, at the end of 2020, it's very, very uh, hot. The market was very, very high. But still, uh, at the beginning of the middle of last year, we were seeing 15, 16, even higher than that, maybe for the 2 million plus, like a triple digit increase in sales. So hot per price segments are definitely slowing down a little bit. We're still showing some strength there. And we still expect 2021 to uh, 2022 to actually have a decent um, uh, uh, housing demand, but it's not so surprised to see some slowdown. In fact, if you look at the open escrow sales, which will show you uh, the open escrow sales for December, will give you some idea of what what close sales we're going to see at the uh, in January or February. This suggests that we are we will continue to see, to see some slowdown, maybe about. Um, not quite 20%, maybe about, you know, 10, 15% compared to um, the January 2021. Now, what, the, what does that really mean? Um, I'm not going to go back to the slide, but I can tell you January 2021, the sales number was at 400, a seasonally adjusted number was at 484,000, which is a very, very impressive, a, a pretty uh, high number. Um, so if we actually drop by about 15% or so from a year ago, that means we are going to be at somewhere around 420, 430,000. We're currently at 429 for December, 2021. So it really, as far as month to month percent change, probably didn't change, uh, wouldn't change that much. Uh, but keep in mind, we have an increase in, we have been seeing some increase in, in interest rates. We have been seeing Omicron variants spreading pretty fast. And the main problem for the housing market is the uh, supply issue. Supply has been the, my, one of the big reasons why we are seeing some dip in, in sales. Take a look at this inventory. This is the months of inventory. Uh, and you have seen this before. And I mentioned before, normal inventory level should be about four and a half months. But you would expect the inventory level to actually started rising slightly at the end of uh, at the year. Usually when we don't have enough, if we don't have that many sales, inventory or months of supply should actually go back up a little bit. But in fact, in December of last year, we actually dipped to the lowest level ever at 1.2 months for the state as a whole. For some areas, it's even worse. Um, this number of below 1.5 months of inventory used to be in numbers in the Bay Area you know, when, when, where the market is very, very tight, but we're seeing it across the state. And new listings actually have not been coming in very, very quickly. You can take a look at these new listings, these new active listings. When you look at the December number compared to a year ago, it dropped about 20, 24% or so. And it has been dropping. If you look at, apologize, uh, if you look at, you know, the 
number at the very uh, tail end on the right hand side right here this chart shows you that we have been consistently dropping by 15 20 percent and most likely that issue is not going to resolve right away it's probably going to take years and it has been creating market competition which is what i mentioned earlier market competition is not just between it's 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 in the market between buyers uh, uh many different buyers but also you know between um Realtors as well because there are uh, we have 220,000 realtors and so there's there's some competition uh, but let's focus on the market first if you look at the market it is very very competitive uh, if you look at the number of multiple offers 71 percent of the market or the sales receive multiple offer that's one of the highest the last time we had you know similar level was in 2013. Many of you who have, who have been in who have been in industry for who have been in industry for a while know that 2013 or 12 home prices actually dipped to a very low level, um, uh, to at around median price at that time was right around 300,000, 340,000, or 50,000 or so, way below what we're at right now. So not a surprise to see a lot of multiple offer back then, but at 800,000 for multiple offers in 2021, that's pretty impressive. That also means that you know, supply has been very, very tight. And the average number of offers for the state is, was at 5.5. Uh, now, again, to many um, of you who have been uh, uh, working in a competitive market, you may, not, you may not think five or six number six offers is actually a very high number. Sometime you can get up to 20. But on average, if you see a multiple offer at that level, that's actually, again, a record high. And if you look at the number of or percent of sales above asking price, that's what uh, you know. The uh, that's that's when the uh, buyers actually feel the heat. A lot of homes were actually actually sold at a price above asking price. Now, if you look at this um, end of the year trend, we know that it's we we can see that it's actually coming down. But even at fifty eight percent for December, that's actually still a very high number compared to the pre pandemic level. In a pre-pandemic level uh, in December, usually that comes down to about 20%, 25%. 58 for December for a holiday season, that's still very, very high. And properties are flying off the shelf really quickly uh, at 12 days. It's a little bit better than a year ago when it was at 11 days, but still 12 days is very, very high. Take a look at what happened in uh, 2000. And well, let's not look at this number. Let's look at you know, in 2016 or 2017. That number typically is at around 30 days or so towards the end of the year. So at 12 days, that's pretty, uh, uh, fly, uh, that's pretty fast off, uh, going off the shelf. And that of course increased, you know, the, the competition uh, put pressure on uh, people offering higher prices. I show you earlier, how, uh, the number of people who offer, uh, the number of sales was multiple offers, how many offers and how many people actually offer a price above asking. That's all pushing up home prices. And that's why at the end of 2021, we have close to 800,000. Uh, the, the median price reached close to 800,000. But that's not the peak. The peak for uh, that happened in, I think, in July or August, uh, it actually reached 827,000. So it is very possible that at the beginning of the year, um, like right now and maybe next couple months, we will still continue to be below 800,000, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start inching up again and uh, wouldn't be surprised if we set a new record for in 2021. Uh, it could possibly be um, you know, somewhere around 840, 850 uh, with a new record. But for the year of 2022, most likely it'll inch up, but probably not by as much. I'll explain a little bit more of that later. Now, I mentioned about increase in price, right? And you have been seeing increase in price. But the other thing that you've probably noticed in the last couple of weeks, at least, have been sharp increase in interest rates. Um, interest rates probably increased faster than what uh, many of us have been uh, predicting. And another, the slide that I'm showing right now shows you um, the mortgage payment that one has to pay uh, for the median price home with the uh, prevailing interest rates. Now, it only uh, it, this one only goes up to December, and I'll go. I'll show you the latest number. But if we use December's number, 
using December's mortgage, uh, December's median price, the increase in rates you can see compared to a year ago has already uh, increased by about 40 basis point. And at the same time, the uh, median price actually increases uh, by about you know, 15, 20%. So when you factor those, both of those in, we are seeing the um, mortgage payment that someone has to buy, someone who bought a median price home will have to increase by about you know, 10%, 11% or so. That's not a small amount. Now factor in the fact that you know, last few weeks, last couple of weeks, we have been seeing some increase in price. Mortgage rates actually start rising towards the end of the year. If you look at this last um, uh, couple of weeks, you can see you know, the last segment of these lines started rising. Now, one of this line is the Freddie Max number, which we released on a weekly basis. But the dark black line is the mortgage news daily, which they track on a daily basis. They are pretty much in line and they're showing the, the mortgage news daily usually is a little bit higher, maybe about 10 basis point or 15 basis point higher or so. But both of them are trending you know, the same, showing that you know, uh, mortgage rates have been rising. Now, partly because of inflation, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, partly because uh, part of it are also because of uncertainty. Uh, but we can, you can see that it has increased by maybe about you know, 25 to 30 basis point in just the last you know, couple of weeks or so. It's gone up to a level that we haven't seen, I think, since March 2020. At 300, I think the uh, daily number shows 3.65 for the 30-year fixed rate. And for the Freddie Max number, it is approaching 3.5%. And uh, now, if you look at that number um, and compare it to the last couple of years, it actually is the highest, it could be the highest in the last 18 months or so. But if you go back to a little bit further to maybe pre-pandemic level, take a look at what happened you know, uh, pre-pandemic. We were, we were happy with maybe about 4% interest rate, 30 year fixed rate. So we're still below the uh, pre-pandemic level, but, of course, people in the last 18 months have been accustomed to seeing interest rates below 3.5. So uh, we are going to see some increase in the upcoming months and the increase along with increase in price will hurt you know, some of the um, potential buyers. Take a look at this chart here. This chart shows you the median price for 2020, our projected median price for 2020 at 3%, one pays, if, assuming a 20% down payment, one pays, you know, 3,774. And then a 50%, a 50 basis point increase will increase the monthly payment by $183. And a 100 basis point increase, uh, if you have an interest, interest rates or mortgage rates at four, you have 373, you increase your monthly payment by $373. That's pretty significant for many buyers. You know, on a monthly basis, increased by about a few hundred bucks. That's pretty significant, and that's why it, it could hurt you know the market a little bit. Um, assuming that you know if um, the um, the the interest rates go uh, increase according to you know what we're showing here, maybe at around three percent, three and a half percent, or probably up to probably it could be up to four percent towards the end of the year. Now with those kind of increase. It's going to uh, hurt. It's going to increase mortgage payment, but also it is going to uh, lead to higher requirement for median household or for household income. Take a look at the survey data that we collected uh, throughout the last 20, 25, 30 years. In the last few years, we have been seeing income requirement, the household income required to buy a median price home or to buy a home, have been increasing. From 2017, it has increased from 120,000. To 150,000 already. That's a 25% increase already. So, you know, if interest rate continue to climb and uh, prices continue to climb, the required income to buy a home will be even higher. And that's going to affect the uh, housing affordability index right here. Only right now, and in, or in 2021, um, we had maybe about 23% of all households that can afford to buy a median price home. With income requirement a little bit higher, that percent of households 
that can reply that can buy a median price home will continue to go down. Take a look at these numbers. This shows you the affordability index and in, uh, by quarter uh, for the last uh, 15 years or so. We are currently in the third quarter. Uh, it's at 24%. We don't have the fourth quarter numbers yet, but it's actually a lower number compared to a year ago, which was at around 33%. And it's definitely lower than what we saw in 2013 and 2012, but it's still higher than what we saw in 2006. And the reason why that is the case is the interest rate at the time of 05 and 06, it was at 6.5%. We are currently at three, three and a half percent, and we are already at, you know, the affordability has come down already. So it's something to be concerned about, something to be aware of. Now, what about um, the consumer sentiment? You know, they know, you know there's a supply constraint. They know that there's uh, going to be an increase in interest rates. What do they think the market is going to be, uh, whether the market is good for them or not in terms of buying and selling? We do a poll every month. And the December's number shows that people show a little bit more optimism, possibly because they realize, okay, interest rates started rising, we need to jump in, but also they might realize that, okay, well, it's the end of the year, we have a little bit more, um, we have a, a less competition uh, towards the end of the year, and maybe it's a good time. So 22% of the uh, people whom we interviewed believe it's a good time to buy, still below the year before at 27%, but slightly improvement from uh, November. But January could go down again because of higher interest rates and because of supply constraint. Uh, but look at sellers. Sellers obviously are very optimistic. 74%, three out of four of them believe it's a good time to sell. Not a surprise because home prices have been rising because uh, there's a lot of demand out there. A lot of people are trying to buy a house and a lot of sellers are willing to sell. But of course, we still have a supply issue. We still have a very significant supply issue. Let's take a look at some regional numbers. You know, the state numbers set the, set, set the trend. Let's take a look at some regional numbers. I'm going to show you a quick snapshot of Southern California as a whole. And then I'm going to look, go into LA and Ventura before we look at some cities double. Some regional numbers, the, some, uh, the Southern California represents about 55% of all sales. So it's not surprised to see a similar trend uh, in uh, Southern California. It shows for 2021, which is this year to date number, an increase of 10% uh, in sales. Very, uh, uh, very good, even better than the state as a whole. But for December, it is slowing down compared to the previous year. Now, price-wise, for the south, for Southern California as a whole, as a region, it increased by 15% uh, at the end of last year. Uh, not a surprise uh, to see. Also, it's very tight supply and days on market at very, very low number. Let's take a look at LA, Ventura, and some of the other counties in comparison. This is an, an annual number. This is a, a year-end number, uh, but you can also see the year-to-date number at the very end here, at the very end column here. LA at the end of last year, December, dipped along with other counties, but not dipping as much as Orange County or Riverside or San Diego. But both LA and Ventura dipped by a high single digit. But if you look at the year as a whole, again, you know it's a pretty uh, a significant increase, a double digit increase in both LA County and Ventura County. Now, part of the reason is, as I, we talked about this before, Flexibility of buying, uh, flexibility of uh, working away from the office. People are moving a little bit further away, maybe more inland, but some people are moving um, to more affordable areas. All of these different uh, reasons um, continue to support uh, home ownership and continue to support people's desire to buy a home. But also the fact that we have a demographics. We have more people actually turning to the age of becoming a uh, forming a household, which I'll show a little later. And that is going to continue to put a little bit more uh, upward pressure on demand. We're going to continue to have some demand in housing, uh, for housing. But the question is whether people can afford to buy. Now, if you look at you know, how LA and Ventura and all the other counties compared to the previous years, this is 2021 for the year as a whole. Look at how it compares for LA, how it compares to the last five years from 2016 to 2020. We're still doing better compared to all the last five years. Um, 
So we're doing we're, we're we're having a pretty good year in 2021. 2022 is go, it is going to slow down slightly, but not by a whole lot. You know, if our calculations are correct, but it's not just LA, Orange, even Riverside, San Diego, and Ventura. They're above the year before. Now the only county in Southern California that's actually not higher than all the years in the five years is San Bernardino, which has the most affordable uh, air, uh, uh, most affordable uh, level. The in 2021 it is still a, an increase from 2020, but it's below the 2017 level. Um, it's not a surprise to see people moving to more affordable uh, market, but it all but not everyone is going moving is going to move to Riverside San Bernardino, especially now that supply is actually very constrained. Let's take a look at you know how some of the supply constraint might have affected you know sales, pending sales in December suggest that LA and Ventura are going to see some decline in sales in the first month of the year. Not as a lot of surprise again, because at the beginning of 2020, it was in the beginning of 2021, it was very, very robust. So we are going to see some softening uh, in, in um, sales, but it is also because of supply constraint. I'll show you earlier, sorry, I showed earlier that Ventura actually going to dip quite a bit you know, in uh, the first month or the second month of the year, 31% compared to 15%. And it's not without any reason. If you look at the supply constraint, it is more uh, constrained in uh, Ventura than LA. Ventura actually dropped in supply and active listings by close to 24% or 24% in December, while LA dropped by 17%. And we have been actually dropping, take a look at these last, uh, 18 months or maybe even more than that, 20 some months or so, we have been dropping on a year over year basis for quite some time, same for Ventura. That uh, lack of inventory is not going to replenish very, very soon. And it's going to affect the number of days on market. LA still uh, compared to the year before, it actually is shows an improvement uh, staying on the market for 12 days instead of 10 days, but take a look at Ventura that actually dipped from 27 days to 22 days. So again, prices, uh, mark, uh, listings are flying off the shelf and also the competition. Look at the competition in LA. Um, they show similar trend as the state peak in Ju June or July with 70%, close to 70% in Ventura at, uh, offering a price above asking and has gradually uh, dipped down to close to about 60% towards the end of the year. It's going to go through a cycle. It's going to, uh, in the next year or so, or this month or the upcoming months, it's going to stay probably at around 60%, maybe even below that, before it starts picking up again uh, in April or May. That, again, put a lot of pressure on price. Home prices continue to increase in LA by 17% and in Ventura by 15%. Now it has something to do with the mix of sales, which I will show a little bit uh, in, uh, in, in, at the end. But the mix of sales change uh, might have put upward pressure on median price, but that mix of sales actually is stabilizing. When it's stabilized, that actually means, that usually means price growth will also, will not be affected by um, the mix of sales, which means we might actually have lower price growth. We will continue to see some price growth, but lower price growth in the upcoming year. And in 2021, for the year as a whole, uh, we're seeing some pretty decent uh, increase in price, 19 and 14%. Um, that, of course, affects affordability. Uh, affordability, when I, uh, when I show you this uh, similar slide earlier, um, at the state level, it, it's at 7, 24% for the third quarter. Now, uh, if you look at Ventura, it's very close to the state as a whole, but LA County actually is a little bit below at 19%. But all of those are below the state, the US level. The national level, it's right at 50% or so. Um, we're not going to be able to catch up with this nation. But you know, just to have some idea, we are actually um, going to probably go down a little bit more it, when we see start, uh, when we start this year with a higher interest rates and also um, the uh, prices continue to increase by a few single digits uh, level. I will show you, you know, those numbers in a minute. But first, let's take a look at some yearly, uh, some um, city level number. I have them 
segmented into three or four segments, starting with Calabasas. Um, I'm showing you the annual numbers uh, for individual cities here. Uh, I picked three cities in Calabasas. Now, you, some of you may remember that last year I show action infographics with individual cities. Those will be available on a CRO website after our uh, release today, and it will be posted probably later this afternoon if you're interested in downloading those and sharing with your client. But as here, I'm showing you the, um, the, the PowerPoint version of it. Look at Agura, Calabasas, and Westlake Village. The story is pretty much the same for most cities, for most areas. It shows increase, pretty significant increase in sales. If you look at the year over year, it's actually increased by double digit and growing by a pretty significant amount. 2021 was a pretty good year for most cities um, for sales, but also for price. If you're homeowners, it has been increasing by double digit, except for Westlake Village increased median price by about six or 7%. But if you're not a homeowner, you know, it's tough. Um, need to save a little bit more in order to get into the market. Um, and it's not making it easy with you know, rising interest rates. And all um, uh, uh, median prices in Calabasas exceed uh, 1 million with Agura, which used to be below, now it's at 1.3 million or close to 1.3 million. Again, it has to do a lot to do with uh, listings, not enough supply. We're seeing significant drop in supply in um, all three cities here. What about Long Beach and um, you know, the, the, the um, Lakewood area? Take a look at Lakewood and Long Beach also increased by double digit in terms of sales um, by about 11% for the whole year. Price also increased by double digit, uh, right around 15, 16%. And in terms of active listings also dropped significantly with Long Beach actually dropping by close to 32% at the end of last year. And South Bay. South Bay, we have a few more cities in South Bay from Gardena to Torrance. Um, all of them are telling a similar story again, increase a double digit increase in sales and in price also a double digit increase in price. Last year, you know, across the nation, across uh, California, we have been seeing pretty significant increase in price because of supply constraint. Supply have been dropping by 30, 40%, depending on which areas you're in or which city uh, you're in. Um, and um, West Side, which is the last segment, uh, Beverly Hills, Culver City, and Santa Monica, um, they're all increasing by um, sizable number, 40% at least, uh, with Culver City and um, Santa Monica increasing close to 60%. Uh, Price-wise, uh, also double-digit gain except for Culver City, but it's also uh, very, very close to 10% for uh, Culver City. And uh, for active listings, again, not a surprise, it dipped quite a bit by 40, 50, 60%. So are we going to see some improvement in the upcoming year? Are we going to see some improvement in supply? I, hard, it, I hate to say this, but supply-wise, we're probably not going to see some improvement um, very, very quickly. Um, what about the economy as a whole? What about the uh, interest rates and everything? Let's take a look. First, when we talk about the overall picture, when we talk about the economy as a whole, how it affects the housing market, you know, the last year and a half, two years, you know, the main factor is still, you know, COVID, right? We have some ups and downs and we have been seeing cases, you know, has, have gone down, a positive rate, positivity rates have gone down. Um, but it's like usually, you know, we're, we're seeing a pattern here now, you know, at the end of the year, most likely we see a, a, an uptake. And that's what happened, especially since we have a new variant, the you know, Omicron variant. Take a look at what happened, you know, in terms of cases, positivity rate and hospitalization. This was last year, you know, when um, we had a, a spike. This is this year. You can see that you know Omicron variant actually has been spreading a, fat, a little faster. So in terms of the number of cases, it actually hit a new record uh, in early uh, January, January, and then it started coming back down. So, but if we follow a similar pattern as last year, maybe in the next couple of weeks, we should actually come back down a little bit more uh, significantly. And maybe by you know, mid-February or maybe late February, things will actually look much brighter. 
In terms of positivity rate though, we're still at a high, even though it is slowing down, we can see that it's slowing down. That positivity rate is much higher than what we saw last year. Last year, it was 16%-ish or so, uh, and it was the peak, and now it's 2022, 23%. But I do believe that it's gonna come down. Now, what's going to continue to go up though is the hospitalization rate, which usually lags, the peak usually lags behind the number of cases or the peak of the case by maybe about two, three weeks. So we may continue to see the hospital, hospitalization rate continue to go up in the next uh, couple of weeks or so before it started actually moderating. Now, the number of cases, you know, COVID, it does have an impact on the economy in general. It affects, for one thing, retail sales. Now, retail sales uh, at the end of last year is not only you know, affected by the you know, number of cases of Omicron variant, but also because of concern about you know, inflation. Now, let's take a look at what happened. If you look at the month-to-month -month number, you can see that in December 2021, it actually dropped 1.9%. It is actually the first drop since May 2021. Before then, it was actually um, showing some you know, good improvement, even though November started uh, slowing down a little bit. I wouldn't be too uh, worried about retail sales though, because part of the reason for uh, a drawback in retail sales is because a lot of people decided to buy early. You, you have heard about you know, supply constraints. People were not able to get stuff from the shelf uh, during the holiday. People were buying early, and that's why in October we saw a surge in number of, uh, in terms of uh, retail sales. And if you look at the year-over-year -year percent change, it's still showing a 17% compared to the year before. So it's actually not too bad in terms of retail sales. In fact, I think in the fourth quarter, uh, people believe that, or economists believe that um, the fourth quarter is going to do a, a bit better than the um, third quarter, which I'll show you in a minute. But consumer confidence, despite that it has improved, um, depending on which consumer uh, number, consumer confidence number that you look at, the consumer confidence from the conference board, which was recorded in uh, late December, shows that the number slightly improved from the year, the month before, but this is before we have a significant spike, spike in Omicron uh, variants. If you look at the number that was released, I think last Friday, the um, consumer sentiment actually dipped to a low point. Um, but I do believe that in the next couple of months, things are going to look a little bit better. Now, going back to retail sales that I mentioned, yes, maybe, you know, it, it may show that, you know, December's overall actually dipped by 1.9%. But if you look at the holiday sales numbers from November to December, on a year over year basis, it actually show a decent improvement of eight and a half percent. And for e-commerce or online activity, it actually increased by 11%. So we do believe the fourth quarter is going to do better. Now, the fourth quarter economic activity uh, will be released probably in about a couple of weeks or so. That number is going to be about the third quarter, uh, the 2% in the third quarter. 2% in, in the third quarter was actually very low. Below, before the 2%, I think we were experiencing maybe in the second quarter about 6% or so. Um, we do believe that in the fourth quarter, things are low, going to look a lot more like the second quarter, maybe with about a five or 6% increase. That's gonna wrap up the year really nice. The other concern that people, the other uh, indicator that people look at are the uh, labor market, right? These are the labor market numbers. We were actually down uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of people lost their jobs uh, because of the lockdown. We lost about 2.7 million jobs for the state. Things start chipping away a little bit in the last 18 months or so, 20 months or so. And we're still behind, you know, last year, California is still, is still, still have lost, you know, some labor um, compared to the pre-pandemic level by about 800,000, 825,000. And if you account for the, the number of uh, jobs that we should have created, if it follows the trend line, we're still uh, below the uh, projection by about 1.3 million. So still a lot of catch up to do. Part of the reason for the catch up is because we actually don't have enough labor supply. 
you've heard in the news about labor shortage. Part of it is because of the Omicron variant, uh, because of the COVID, uh, people may not necessarily go back to work because of concern about your know, COVID situation, uh, but also because of some of the reasons, maybe take care of their kids or take care of their um, people who have uh, COVID. But that number actually has come down for people who actually um, couldn't find a job uh, or couldn't uh, get a job because of COVID it has come back, come down from somewhere around 53% to about 10%. So that number actually has come down. The other number though, uh, is a lot of people might have retired early, you know, because of the pandemic. Many people decide to, um, to quit or uh, to, to take an early retirement this is a survey done by uh, Pure Research. It shows you the number of people who decided to go to, to retire um, in the last couple of quarter or last few quarters or so. In the third quarter, that number actually, the percent of adults, older adults who retired increased from 16.6% in the third quarter of 2019 to 17.1%. So there's been some increase, same for 65 to 74. That number has increased. So the number of people who uh, have been retiring or have retired, you can see that it actually has started rising a little bit in 2020, 2021. This chart is a little bit more telling. I don't remember whether I've showed this, shared this chart before, but it shows the, the percent of, uh, of population retired has been steadily uh, uh, going up at a trend line like right here. But in 2020, because of the pandemic, there's a, there was a surge in number of uh, people who uh, decided to retire. That number surged all the way up here, came back down slightly, but it didn't go all the way back down. So this number is the number that we are, have been seeing, and it's significantly higher than what we are used to seeing before the pandemic. That push up home. That push up, you know, wage rates. That push up, you know, the um, the um, average wage a little bit. That's increased cost of doing business. But it's not the only thing that actually increased the cost of doing businesses. Um, look at you know the increase in cost on uh, energy and food and material and of course on shipping. All those contribute to increased inflation. That's the discussions that, that you have been hearing for the last few months or so. People have been talking about high inflation. How high is inflation, in fact? You know, if you look at those numbers, these are numbers, inflation numbers going back to 2010. We are very used to, in the last few years, seeing inflation below the 2% or it's just slightly above the 2% level. But take a look at what happened since maybe, um, maybe uh, early last year. I think February or March, we started rising. And the number that we're seeing recently at 7%, that's the highest in nearly 40 years. So we have been increasing at a very fast rate because of all those reasons that I mentioned, wage growth and also because of uh, material costs, energy costs, those have been rising. But things are going to slow down. If you look at you know, the red bars right here, those are the forecast numbers by uh, UCLA. It suggests that we are going to peak in the fourth quarter and it's going to slow down probably not all the way to the level that we want to, but it's going to slow down at the end of 2022. And, you know, the economy will continue to improve. On the left-hand side, you see, you know, the um, GDP level. This is the trend line where we should be. It should go back, down, back to the level that we are used to seeing, maybe by the end of 2022 or maybe 2023, depending on a couple of things, depending on whether service sectors will improve, uh, or not, um, depending on the COVID situation. So here's the forecast for the, um, the, the uh, economy. And then I'm gonna show you some numbers for the market as a whole. If you look at the economy, 2021, uh, we just wrapped up. Uh, I still need to update those numbers, finalize those numbers, but you know, econ the, the, the economy is going to improve by 6%. Once we, once, we receive, once we see the fourth quarter number, we'll know for sure. It's gonna increase by 6%, but 2022 will actually increase by only 4.1%. But even with the 4.1%, it's higher than what we're accustomed to seeing at around 3% or so. Unemployment 
these numbers are probably going to go down even further than I previously predicted. We may actually go down below 4% in 2022. And, but these numbers, the CPI or the inflation number, most likely will be a little bit higher. Uh, for state of California, it's actually lagging behind the uh, nation as a whole, uh, partly because we have um, a huge leisure and hospitality sector. We have a lot of people traveling to, uh, uh, we, we used to have more people traveling to the US, uh, to, the, to California, but of course, because of travel restrictions, it has come down. So it's going to take some time before the unemployment start you know, going back to the level that we're used to seeing. What about the market? This is a slide that I showed you earlier about demographics, but I wanna show you uh, visually so that you, you get a grasp of it. This chart shows you the number of population by age group. You can see that this age group, 26 to 30, what was it, 34? That's the age group, that's a prime age group for to become a homeowner or to form a household. That number is, uh, will, be, will be a huge, that is going to be a huge number uh, in the next couple of years. And so many people will be forming their households and they will need a home. So that's why, you know, uh, based on the demographics, we're going to see some demand. Question is whether the, these are going to be first time buyers and whether these first time buyers will be able to afford to buy. First time buyers, in fact, you know, uh, based on the statistics that we collect, makes up about 36% of all home sales. It's a slight decline compared to 2020, but that number will continue to play a big role in 2022 and 2023 moving forward, but it still comes down to affordability. First time buyers, those who purchased in 2021 uh, for their first time, required a household income of 110,000. Smaller than the number that you know we 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 need that that uh, home buyers need in general, but it's still a very high number, a six-figure number, and they need a, a down payment of about fifty thousand. But first-time buyers still will continue to buy, and that's why we're we're optimistic in twenty twenty-two and twenty twenty-three, and they're doing in a fashion that is actually more. Um, responsible compared to you know those uh, their counterparts in 2006 and 20, 2007 they are actually having more skin in the game they're putting out close to 10 percent down payment as compared to 2.4 there are actually very few of them are putting zero down payment as compared to 41 percent back in 06 and they're taking less risky loans because they don't need to because you have 30-year fixed rate at below four percent um what about other markets? What about vacation home and investor homes and also international? Vacation home, uh, we're still seeing many people actually buying vacation home. In fact, an increase in the number of people buying vacation homes, 6.6% as compared to, I think it was 5%, maybe even, uh, uh, well, 5.5% and maybe 5% in the last few years. And if you look at the resort market, the resort market actually has been doing very well. In a significant increase in sales in Big Bear, Lake Arrowhead, but also significant increase in price as well. So pretty uh, decent uh, share uh, increase in uh, the vacation home. Investor market, I know you have heard in the news, uh, a lot of news talk about, oh, investors are coming back. Um, they're not necessarily um, a significant increase in California. Um, as compared to some of the other states, because California has been rising in terms of price by a significant amount. If you look at the 2021 number, yes, we saw an increase in number of share that's being sold to investors, but so that's a significant jump from 2020. But if you compare that to you know pre-pandemic level, we're still below that level. I still believe you know in 2021 or 2022 we're going to see an improvement, but the improvement may be a little bit more gradual compared to what we have seen before. And finally, the international buyers. International buyers, um, they took a breather, uh, a breather, a breather in uh, 2020. It actually dropped down to below 2% because of travel restrictions and because of other reasons. But then people started you know, coming back because you can actually see a home online. You don't necessarily have to be there in person. It actually came back to about 
But I also believe that a bounce back uh, it could be actually scaled back in 2022, partly because you know a lot of people couldn't buy in 2020. So you know you see a pent up demand in 2021, but the pent up demand may actually come down a little bit in 2022. Um, and the structural issues. There are issues that we need to address. It's the same issues that I mentioned. We have uh, supply constraints, both because we're not building enough. If you look at the chart on the left-hand side, we're not building enough. We're building below that dotted line, but also because of people staying in their house for a little longer. That also is a demographic uh, uh, related issue. People are getting older, they tend to stay at their home a little bit longer. So that might be, an, they might not be an issue that can be resolved very easily. And if you look at some comparison, um, population in 20 in the last 30 years, 35 years, increased from, in 1986, increased from 27 million to 40. In terms of realtors, increased from 112,000 to 206,000 between those 35 years. Permits wise, Number of homes that we built dropped, you know, on a yearly basis from 256 to 100, and also that's the reason why because we're not uh, building enough homes. That's the reason why you know the number of homes increased only increased very very slightly despite the fact that we have an increase in population. Um, so that is definitely something that uh, we need to uh, continue to address. Now for home sellers, they're doing very well. They're actually profiting. Um, a lot from the last, you know, from the increase in uh, home prices. Look at the um, the cat net cash gain or the uh, profit um, uh, comparing the sold price to their their um, purchase price minus the um, minus the um, money that they put in their house. It has been consistently at right around two hundred thousand or so, but in twenty twenty one, the number jumped by about you know, 100,000, 112,000 because of increase in, uh, in price by 20%. Uh, and many of the sellers who will be selling, who uh, plan to sell will also be buying. About 50% of them will be buying. The question is, where will they be buying? Uh, many of them actually could move out of California because, uh, you know, they want to retire. They want to move to something more of a little bit affordable. Maybe also because of the flex flexibility of uh, uh, buying a home or uh, working for, away from the office. Take a look at the survey results here. It shows that 35% actually show uh, that 35% of those sellers uh, who plan to move out. 35% uh, of sellers plan to move out of California, and a number of people who actually will be. Um, moving away from the city that they used to live in actually has also increased. You can see that number, the blue line of people who move within the cities actually dropped as well. Um, and you might have asked about supply before, about whether there is gonna be a foreclosure. I might've mentioned this before, this is just an update. In California, only about 0.8% of uh, homes, uh, 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 homes with mortgages actually uh, have negative equity. That means a very, very small number of people are going to um, have to auction their house or foreclose their property. Compared to about um, 15 years ago when we had the great recessions, the number of people who have equity, negative equity was at 26, 25%. So that's a significant um, uh, difference. And I'm gonna skip this. This is a repeat from a first time buyers. Um, what about prices? Well, I mentioned about mix of sales. Mix of sales makes a difference in terms of price growth in the median price. And you can see that mix of sales actually has stabilized. The million dollar plus makes up a much bigger percentage, a much lower percentage before, started rising, and then it starts stabilizing in about March or April of last year. Since then, it has been at around 28% meaning 28% of all homes sold were above a million. And that number stays the same. So that's why, you know, in the upcoming year, if that number continues to stabilize, we're probably not going to see a significant increase in median price. And we're already seeing that the number, the percent growth is slowing down here. With that said, let me wrap it up with the forecast. The uh, housing market, here's a prediction. In 2022, 
Now, 2021 numbers, we still have to finalize, uh, but uh, we expect a uh, close to 7% increase in, in sales. In fact, 7.3% increase in sales. Price, it is at, um, I showed you earlier, it's actually increased by 19.3% instead of 20.3. For 2022, we actually expect a, small, uh, a, a slowdown in sales in 2022, a, a dip of 5.2%. But even with a dip of 5%, take a look at this number compared to 2020 and 2019 and 2018, that's still higher than those years. But price is going to go up. This time, it's not going to be a uh, double digit increase. It's only going to be a 5.2% increase, a more normal growth rate. Uh, the 30 year fixed rate, right now we're still predicting an average of 3.5, but it looks like that number needs to be adjusted a little bit more and housing affordability probably will go down a little bit. With that said, here's the summary of what we talked about. I believe housing demand will continue to remain pretty solid, even though it is going to be a little bit slower than compared to 2020. Slower because of supply shortage, we'll continue to have constraint because of supply shortage, but price gains are going to uh, be a little bit more moderate this time, even though we have supply shortage. What about the economy? The macro at the macro level, economy will continue to grow, uh, but that also means rates will likely rise because of inflation. And the wild card, of course, is COVID. Uh, that's something that I don't know how to tell you. Uh, I thought this year or last year it's going to go away, but it looks like uh, it might be uh, with us for a little bit longer. With that said, let me turn it back to many. Uh, if we have time, we can do a little bit of a QA. Oscar, just as always, mind blowing. Uh, sometimes it's too much information, but it's okay. We have the recording, so we're gonna watch it at least three times <laughs> <laughs> afterwards. Um, yes, we do have some questions. We've gone over time, but it's totally uh, fine. You know, this is super important. So I'm gonna go in the chat, and um, let me just go back for a second. Um, question from Rosie: How do you force whatever you can uh, answer? Of course, ask her. How do you foresee the amount of people leaving California compared to the people coming to California? What do you okay. see how many units California needs to build? Oh yeah, so first question. So, you know, uh, about my, uh, it's some kind of like our migration. We, I show you a chart that shows you sellers moving out of California. Let me go back to that chart. But here's the thing, yes, we are, we, in the last year, I think in 2020, we saw actually move, more people moving out of California than coming in. And we actually saw the population actually dip slightly. Uh, after the revision, though, I think it still show a slight increase. Now, that was 2020 when a lot of people actually moved out of California, partly because of the flexibility of working from home and partly because of, um, you know, not uh, having people to, uh, not having foreign uh, migration from, uh, from out of the country. Now, in, in 2021 and, 20, and 2022, we do expect, you know, an increase in population. But you're absolutely right. Um, there will still be out migration because of you know, housing affordability issue. The out migration is a big problem that we have been uh, you know, mentioning. I don't think, I don't remember whether I showed you some slides before. Out migration, do, it does have an impact on not only you know, the population growth because we, de we need population growth in order to um, you know, continue the demand in housing, but also, when you have people out migrating from California, that also means some of the companies could actually, some people, some companies that uh, find that people may be having a tough time um, living in California may move out. So this is definitely a, a, an issue that we need to address. One way to address this, of course, is to build more homes, making a, a more homes more affordable. Uh, it is a more long-term issue, but it's true. Out migration probably will persist uh, in the upcoming years or so until we come up with a solution like building more homes or making more homes more affordable. Um, thank you, Asko. And yes, we're gonna share the, the slides later today from uh, Stuart. Uh, good stuff, Stuart. Um, the, the question is at what stage does inflation getting too high establish impact the mortgage market to have it go much higher and potentially have a severe impact on the market? Well, first of all, it's already it's already having a pretty significant impact in the market. If you um, if you've been tracking the percent the, the interest rates now, 
it is currently at 7%, which I considered pretty high. Now, it really, it's a relative question. If you look compared to what happened in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, or, you know, the 80s, I should say, you know, we have inflation rate at a much higher level. And it was struggling with um, just deflation, that is high inflation rate, but at the same time, unemployment also at a high level. Now, right now we have slower growth. We have, we have been seeing some slow growth in, uh, in the economic activity, but we do believe that it's going to pick up in, um, in fourth quarter and probably continue on for 2022. We, if we started seeing you know, improvement in economic growth, then we don't need to worry too much about stagflation. Then we need to focus on the inflation question. Now, the Federal Reserve started raising, uh, uh, said they will start raising Fed funds rate in maybe around March, April or so. And the bond market took it to heart and actually started raising, you know, started uh, repositioning their portfolio. And that's the reason why we started seeing, you know, increase in interest rates in recent weeks. Now, question is how fat, how much that increase is going to, um, we're going to see this increase in 2022. Uh, right now, we're seeing, as I mentioned, a 30-year fixed rate, the daily rate at 3.6. I do believe that it might actually inch up a little bit more. But keep in mind, those are, spe those are rates adjustment based on speculation. They're already pricing in the Federal Reserve to um, raise rates by four times. If uh, Federal Reserve actually decide to raise it less than four times, then, of course, the number will come down. I do believe that the 3.6 or 3.7% um, it will probably rise all the way to maybe 3.8 in the next couple months or so before it's calming down a little bit. I still believe interest rate, 30-year fixed rate, will remain at below uh, at around 4, 4 to 4.25% towards the end of the year. Um, so it really depends on what you think about 4% or 4.25. You know, for buyers who are accustomed to seeing 3%, 3.5%, the four and a half or 4.25 percent is high, but if you look at how it compares to you know two years ago, people may still that think that it's uh, uh, a decent level. The question also is what they think about is going to happen moving forward. If you don't think, if buyers do not think that it's going to come down to three and a half, it's going to continue to grow but go up by you know by uh, 25 basis point. 4% or 4.25% is still a pretty decent number and they will actually lock it. Um, the more important question uh, or concern that I have is not only, not specifically on interest rates, but uh, more so on the supply issue that we are seeing right now. Thank you, Oscar. Um, another question is from, uh, oops, there she is, from um, Joanna, you after, uh, you mentioned that 71% of the homes were received multiple offers. Where, where do you get that data from? It's from, our, from MLS. From, we, we track MLS transactional numbers. Um, actually, I take that back. You know, um, there are two charts on the slide. The number of multiple offers, that's actually from our survey data that we sent out, that we uh, sent every, um, every year. The, the other number that shows percent of sales above asking price, that's from the MLS transaction. So yeah, a lot of this, the information we have to collect from survey data and the survey data, those are uh, survey responses from our realtors, from our members. Uh, we gathered maybe about a couple of thousand responses uh, every year uh, to get a, a snapshot. So that's from there. Awesome, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's on spot. Uh, from uh, from uh, Tubi, do you forecast that the high inflation rate alongs alongside higher interest rates and Fed rate increase will lead to a recession in 22, maybe 23? Right now, we don't. You know, the inflation at 7%, uh, which is a, 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 the question that I, uh, the, the, the issue that I mentioned earlier. Now, yes, we have inflation, but, you know, we will not, it will not lead to a, um, a recession unless we have both inflation and you know structural issues on the unemployment on, on the uh, employment market. Right now, we actually have shortage of employment. So, in terms of employment, in terms of unemployment rate, it's actually very very low. We still believe the the but the issue that we need to tackle is of course um, the COVID situation. It looks like the COVID number, number of cases, yes, continue to rise, but it looks like if once we pass through this peak, uh, things are going to get a little bit better. 
if we have the COVID situation under control, or at least a little bit more under control, then the service sector will start opening and the economy will continue to do a, bit, a little bit better, uh, continue to improve compared to last year. The inflation numbers, I do believe it's very close to peaking. Right now it's at 7%, but I think it's going to come back down. Now it's not going to come back down right away to 2%. That's unrealistic. I do believe that it's going to come back down to maybe about three and a half to 4% by the end of the year. So with that number slowing down, Federal Reserve may not need to uh, um, expedite the, uh, uh, the uh, Fed funds rate increase as fast. Like, like I said, they do try to keep it very transparent so that people can prepare. The, the, the uh, concern, the other concern that I have that may lead to a little bit of a slowdown in the economy is if the uh, financial markets start getting a little bit more volatile, which it has been in the last few weeks, if it, gets, if it gets a little bit more volatile, if we actually have a financial market uh, collapse and it lasts for a little longer, then that might actually affect economic activity. I do believe there could be some adjustment, but I don't believe that it's going to last too long. So I think we will, be, uh, we will have a decent year for 2022 by the end of the year. Let me put it this way. Yeah, yeah. well, definitely looking forward to see that. Janet? Yeah, um, I'm reading where um, Fannie and Freddie are going to be raising their upfront fees by like one to four percent. How do you think that's going to affect everything? Very good question. Now, uh, it is we 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 had that on our radar, and you know it depends on you know how much adjustment it has. Every time you know there is a fee you know uh, imposed on loans, and depending on it also depends on the amount you know, that they're, they're putting the uh, fees on. If it's up, if it's above a certain number, if it's above a certain uh, loan limit, and I believe they are putting it on, they call it, you know, high uh, end or high uh, ceilings. So it really depends on how they determine that number. But for California, it really is, most areas are high, right? Right, high end, right? So, or, or high ceilings. So a, a 50, you can, you can look at it from that stem, the slide that I showed you earlier. Whenever it shows a 50% or 50 basis point increase, it's going to increase the uh, mortgage payment by about you know, 180 bucks, 200 bucks. A 100 or 200 uh, in, a dollar increase will actually lead to the affordability level dropping by maybe about you know, 0.5% or so. I have to do some calculation and see. So it definitely will lead to you know, fewer people being able to buy. Now, hopefully it is not going to lead to more people taking risky loans because that actually is going to a risky, when I say risky, I should say risky loans. I should say putting a smaller down payment because if, and people will put smaller down payment, but hopefully not a whole uh, much smaller because if people put too, too low a down payment and if you know home prices start dipping, then we're going to see some um, problem in the long term. So I think it is going to lead to a, a slight decline in um, housing demand uh, going forward if the fees actually apply. And it really depends on how much it applied, like I said. Uh, but you know, hopefully the uh, impact is minimal in terms of sales because there is, let's face it, and I, saw, I showed it to you earlier, the demographic is on our side more people do need more homes. The question is whether they can afford to, 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 um, to buy a home or not. And hopefully we can keep you know, interest rates at a decent level. Uh, I foresee that in 2023, it will probably be somewhere between four and four and a half percent uh, for the average, but we'll see how that goes. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Lester, did, did you have a question? You raised your hand? If not. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, that's all we have. Um, ask away, thanks again. Um, brilliant presentation as always, great information, great insight. Uh, we are gonna have you, I think, uh, towards the uh, mid, mid year to get some uh, kind of your, your crystal ball uh, uh, you know, prediction, <laughs> right? Absolutely, I think we have it set on uh, for August. So I think we'll, August, we'll see. Yeah. And, and at the... Uh, at the end of the presentation, it has my email address. So if you can come up with the questions or if you um, didn't want to ask the questions, 
um, in front of Mike, uh, feel free to send it to me directly. Uh, it's oscarw at car.org. Brilliant. Yeah, if you don't mind, just uh, add it to the chat. Oscar, I much appreciate it. Once again, we're going to share that presentation Let me do that. Yes. that Oscar uh, uh, showed us uh, earlier. Oscar Way, um, good job. Thank you, as always. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me again. Um, our pleasure, as, uh, as always, once again. This is the uh, training for this week. Uh, as you can see, we, we are, you know, did officially combine the four offices, right? Uh, from Calabas all the way down to Long Beach Coastal. So go, go, to, a, to, go, go to your hub, each office hub, right? Uh, a, a site that we built so you can see exactly what's happening. There's a lot of information, a lot of data, a lot of uh, stuff happening. So make sure to take advantage of uh, what we have. Uh, um, Oh man, I, I I did practice my Spanish, but uh, not as good enough. I wanted to you know to say it in Spanish, um, uh, but and um, Alina uh, uh, Rodriguez, uh, thank you for uh, the, the the class, the speedy class in Spanish. But this coming Friday, uh, we're gonna have a live Zoom with our partners in uh, KW Colombia, um, amazing people. They they actually came to visit us last month, and they're gonna do a business planning session in Spanish. See. <laughs> Muy bien. So it's going to be Friday. It's going to be Friday at 9 a.m. over Zoom. Go to the training calendar, click on the link, direct. So if you know you, clients, friends, or whatever, want to plug in and uh, learn from our Colombia uh, friends, uh, that's going to be incredible session. So that's that. Uh, we are going to have our KW Health uh, um, monthly family hike this coming uh, Saturday. Uh, the caves up in West Hills. Join me, join us, Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, if you're a uh, hiker, uh, pets are uh, friendly, welcome in that specific trail. Family reunion, we are going, some of us is gonna be uh, still happening in Florida um, next, uh, next month, 19th to 22nd. If you're interested, let us know. We're gonna give more information. And uh, shout outs to our offices. We are going to celebrate uh, during uh, February as well in the award ceremonies. Uh, first to uh, Calabasas, you guys crushed it. Uh, 1.3 billion volume of sales last year and a thousand closed units. Calabasas, good job, everybody. Uh, we're going to share those uh, images with you guys so you can tag it. And Long Beach, Coastal, 590 million volume. Congratulations. Um, the highest ever, sent in Calabasas, 70, 755 closed units. He just crushed it. Congratulations, guys. Long Beach Coastal and the um, uh, LA Harbor office, 422 million sales volume in 531 closed units. LA Harbor, congratulations. And our South Bay office with 49 million volume of sales and 511 units. Congratulations. Uh, definitely time to celebrate. And this year is going to be even better. You agree? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Asuka gave us good predictions, so might as well just you know, enjoy the moment, right? Um, just proud of you guys, all of you. Uh, amazing work and dedication and commitment. Um, so I'm looking forward to have, uh, you know, once again, amazing year. It's already ha happening. Award ceremonies by invitation. Coastal, February 2nd. Calabasas, February 3rd. South Bay the 16th and LA Harbor on the 23rd. Um, and by the way, if you're the top 10 production of your office, uh, top 10 or top, top nine, top 10, mm -hmm. uh, there's a special thing that's gonna happen uh, for you on the February 20, uh, for you and with you, February 24th, uh, more to come. With that, that's all we have for today, guys. Oh, oh, thank oh, oh, you. Really oh, quick, really yeah. quick. Okay, one more so time. one more thing, you guys. Just in case you guys don't know, tomorrow is Super Many's birthday, <laughs> right? Uh, Kim tried to put in a slide. I won't hold her against. I won't hold it against her. No, but uh, uh, you couldn't refresh the slide. <laughs> so anyway, so real quick, we're just gonna sing Happy uh, Birthday if you guys want to join us in doing so. And he's gonna wear this oh, yes. adorable fluffy little hat. Okay, ready?
Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, what, what, what is she doing the, 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 the hat looks good on you, Manny. You look. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. It looks so cute. Looks good on you. It's something like you had to refresh it. Yeah, it's so obvious. Oh, no, no worries. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Oh, the trailers is kind of like it's yeah. so that both your smokes, the twice as wide as ours, and you look happier.